Welcome to the NEO Operational Video Series for Software Version 3.8. These videos are designed for targeted instruction to get you up to speed quickly and simply. This video targets the Effects Library. Now the Effects Library is pre-built. It's available here on the top of your main monitor and is available in every show file. So if you start a new show file, this is what you're going to get. I have pre-patched uh, the first 100 channels just as a one-to-one -one for dimmers. I have patched 101 through 120 as PL4 LEDs and I have patched 201 through 210 as Verilite VLZ profiles just so we have some conventional, some LEDs and some movers for which to look at the effect library. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is grab channels 1 through 20. Notice I'm not giving them a level. There's a reason for this, which we'll discuss in a bit. I'm going to go to the effect library. And here you have uh, many effects that are pre-built. And the background color will tell you what it controls. So the olive, or the sort of a drab green, is for intensities, the primary green is for position, red is for color, uh, magenta is for zoom, and the teal is for iris. So we're going to grab just a simple intensity effect called square wave wrap. So this is running square wave wrap and now I have four parameters that I can control. Length, offset, scale, and stagger. So the longer the effect length is, the slower it responds. The shorter the effect length is, the faster it responds. Now I'm doing the manipulation here on screen. You can also manipulate these via your encoders. Offset is essentially the low value for the effect. So if I bring this up, and offset is in DMX values. So if I bring this up, I'm at offset DMX value 55, so you can see the low value is 22. I'll just put that right back to zero. And we'll look at scale. Scale is essentially the high value when you're dealing with intensity effects. So if I bring the scale down to, say, 84, then you'll see now it's going from zero to 84. Stagger applies delay to the start of the effect upon each channel. So I've just set stagger to zero so that you can see that it's applying to everybody equally. But the moment I start applying just a little bit of stagger, you'll see it starts rippling across those fixtures. And the more stagger that I apply, the greater the delay or the greater the ripple. So those are the parameters that you can use to to adjust your effect. Now when you're ready for it, I'm going to go back to uh, current playback here. When you're ready to record this, the simplest thing to do is actually to just record it into a queue. And the important thing to know here is to look at your defaults and we're going to see effect is in yellow, which means it will include it when I record. So I'm just going to say record. Now I'm just typing this on the keyboard rather than using the console keys because you can do either one. I'm just going to say record enter. And here's what happened. It has recorded the next whole queue number. And you can see there's a little flag here in the corner. This is effect one. What the Neo software has done is taken the effect library and created a show-based effect for you that is effect one. Now if we want to, we can go into our effect list and we can see right now we're looking at all and here is effect number one that it created for us. Here are the channels that it pertains to, here's the parameter on which it applies, which is the dimmer, and here's the profile that it is assigned, which is essentially an inverted non-dim. So all of this is uh, customizable. You can adjust it manually if you wish. You can also adjust the length, DMX offset, scale, 
and stagger. But we're going to leave this as is for the moment. And what I'm now going to do is bring up some other channels and I'm going to record the next cue. Notice I just did REC instead of RECORD because that is a legal shortcut. And I can see that I have Q2 and if we'll notice effect one is still running and it is still tagged in the queue. Why would that be? Uh, it's essentially a tracking function. The effect is still going to be running until you give it an instruction not to. So you can continue writing cues. The effect will still be there. Also notice we have a new color to talk about. Uh, effects, uh, channels that are manipulated by effects always have a gray background with a white level white level meaning instruction and the next thing that we could do is look to uh, the library effect control where you can see you've got your parameters to manipulate but we also have a new tab called Q effects so this will show you all of the effects that are running and let's say we're at a point in the queue list where we're ready to stop this and have the next queue uh, essentially fade or stop the effect. So I'll hit stop. I'll go back to my command line, REC, enter. And now we can see that that has been, the effect is no longer there, meaning that when we run Q1, the, Q, the effect will run, run Q2. The effect will still be running with Q3 the effect will stop and it will fade in the queue time. So that's um, an introduction to intensity effects. Using the effect library, we're now going to look at colors. So I'm going to grab channels 101 through 120. We will go to the effect library and I will turn on sine wave. And so it's doing a sine wave and I say, you know what? That's not what I want. So I'm going to go back to the library. I'm going to turn it off, go back to the library, and I'm going to pick up Rainbow Chase. And I say, ah, that's what I want. Now here we'll probably want intensity so that we can see the output on stage. And there we have that. Again, I'll go to Library Effect Control where you have length, offset, scale, and stagger. I'm going to recommend you just play with this as needed this point offset and scale instead of being the low and the high value of intensity are going to be the uh, the beginning starting point of the of the hue and the scale will be uh, how far it is allowed to go on the hue scale to give you a range of colors so you can limit that by uh, increasing offset and decreasing scale so this is the effect that I want. Everything's fine. I'm going to record this into a queue. I'll just record enter. And now we can see it says effect two. Again, we can go into the effect list, take a look at effect number two. There's the number. And we can see the channels, the parameter, and the profile. So you see how this works. I'm going to skip over what we did with the last one of recording another queue and then stopping the effect and recording the next queue because we've gone through that. We'll just go right to the movers. We'll give them some output so we can see. And we'll go to the effect library and we're going to grab a can-can effect. A can-can effect is just an effect on tilt, sort of moving tilt back and forth. So there that is. Again, I could play with the parameters as needed but I'm going to say this is fine. So I'm going to go back to current playback and I'm going to say record enter. Now notice because effect 2 is still running it is now part of Q5 and it's created effect 3 which if we go to our effect list we can see that Q3 is the position effect of CanCan -can on tilt. So let's say the next thing we want is to stop both of the effects and we'll record the next cue and that sort of finishes that sequence. Alright, well thanks for watching this Neo operational video for software version 3.8. Go to the Philips Strand website at www.strandlighting.com for many more videos on Neo programming and operation.